Hey everyone, Cody here. Today I want to share with you uh, a story of basically how I got sued twice. Now it's nothing super dramatic. It actually is just based, uh, well, it's a lesson I wanted to share. And the lesson is about overspending. Now, I rec the reason that I'm telling you the story, I was prompted because I recently saw a video by Gary V or Gary Vaynerchuk and he was, uh, someone asked him what the most, uh, like what the best money related choice he ever made was. And his response was he never overspent. And that's a very important lesson that I think a lot of people don't know or aren't taught growing up. And I certainly really wasn't taught that growing up myself, but it's a lesson I had to learn the hard way. And I want to share that with you because inevitably it got me sued. So. Let me real quick kind of tell you my background growing up. Well, when I was growing up, we were always broke. We never really had any money. We had a food, you know, we had food on the table. We had a house, but my we always struggled, right? And my parents always told me not to get credit cards or sorry, they said to only get credit cards for emergencies. But my parents also had credit cards and then they maxed them out. And eventually my parents filed bankruptcy. And so they lost a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, I remember, I didn't really know what bankruptcy was, but I remember them doing it because afterwards they couldn't really do much financially as far as credit wise afterwards for a while. So I remember that growing up. And, uh, but they, it's funny because they told me not to get credit cards, um, or at least not to get them except for emergencies. And then they went and maxed them out. And so what I got out of that was, you know, you could just do that and then file for bankruptcy. So that's kind of what I got out uh, as a kid. But I always told myself, I don't want that to happen to me. And it did. So back in tw uh, 2008, I lost my job working for Pepsi in the warehouse. I was a warehouse worker for Pepsi and I lost my job. Well, at that time we had two credit cards, my wife and I, well, girlfriend at the time. No, no, no. We got married right after that. So, you know, uh, wife, sorry. Apologize. So me and my wife had two credit cards and because I lost my job and didn't get work right away, I didn't get work for quite some time. Um, I ended up maxing out those credit cards. Now, because I grew up thinking that this was really not that big a deal, you know, we maxed out these credit cards. Obviously, as soon as you max them out and stop paying on them, uh, they start calling all the time. But you know, just like everyone else I knew, I just ignored the calls. I blocked them. Yeah, I just let them go to voicemail, whatever, right? I didn't think it was a big deal. And it really wasn't. I mean, they went on my credit report, but I didn't really care. Just kind of let them go. And, you know, they just kind of went on the credit report and that was it. Uh, so it was really not that big a deal years ago. So 10 years ago. Um, but, you know, I had uh, I had initially got those credit cards for emergencies. And so... I got those two credit cards and we ended up maxing them out and you know they went on my my credit report and you know we never paid those off and you know that was that well fast forward about 10 years and last year uh, actually at the end of 2016 going into 2017 if you watch the videos of my other channel my painting channel i talk about that i left my job to start a consulting business that never took off. And so I had to go back to work. So there was about seven months of time where I wasn't working. And again, we had a couple of credit cards um, that I had while I was working. And then when I left, you know, we had to basically pay bills. So I maxed out those credit cards. And the amount on the credit cards this time was much more than it was on the other two years ago. In fact, um, I actually had three cards total. One my wife had and then one that, uh, or a couple that I had in my own name. And I, it came out to, I think, probably like $8,000 between all three of them. So, you know, we maxed out the cards. I eventually went to work and I started paying all, you know, when you're so far behind, you know, months behind, you start paying the important stuff. So we had to pay back, you know, all the electric bills and, 
you know, all the house payments and all that. We started, you know, paying all that stuff off and getting back on track. Well, obviously you kind of pay the most important things because you got to keep your house if you can, and you got to pay for the car if you, you know, if you're going to be using it to get to work and you got to pay the electricity to keep the lights on. So we sacrificed everything else basically to pay the important stuff. So because months went by of me not paying them back and maxing them out once again, uh, they eventually, you know, charged those accounts off. Now, because I had done this before and I did not file for bankruptcy 10 years ago, I didn't think that was really that big a deal because, you know, I'd done it before, nothing really big happened out of it, and I didn't have to file bankruptcy last time. So I really didn't think it was that big a deal. But it was different this time. So <clears throat> in 2017, when I stopped paying them and then I finally went and start, started working again, but they had been charged off. In 2018, you know, I was getting the, the calls from like the debt collectors and all that. And again, I really didn't think it was that big a deal. I was like, well, you know, I let it go last time. So I'm just going to let it go. It's not a big deal. But uh, so one day, you know, about in the summer of last year, 2018, I got a knock on the door and, um, you know, someone was like, hey, is Amanda here? You know, my wife. And I was like, yeah, yeah hold on a second. So my wife comes up and she's like, oh, yeah, how, you know, what can I do? And they served her papers. And so basically we got sued by our biggest creditor first. So our, our biggest creditor was Citibank and nothing against them, but I did get sued by them. Um, well, we we got sued by them. Um, for the five thousand dollars that we owed, and we were kind of astounded, right? Because we never been sued before, obviously, and the fact that we were getting sued for a credit card debt was kind of surprising. And you know, anyway, we we got this this uh, the papers and everything, and uh, yeah, we were getting sued. So it was very weird, like very very strange, and. And it was all legit and everything, and and we were just kind of freaking out, right? So we were we were kind of freaking out. We were worried, right? And we didn't know what to do, and we considered bankruptcy, um, but there's a lot to bankruptcy. So it's not you know, it's not just like this simple fix. Like you have to go through a lot of things just to do bankruptcy, just to file for it. You have to pay to file, and you have to have a, a bunch of paperwork and. You have to put in all these things and all these documents and things like that. So, you know, it's not as easy as a, you don't just file for it and it's done. You know, there, there's a bit of a process to it. So we were fr freaking out, you know, do we fight it even though we owed the debt? Do we file for bankruptcy? You know, do we try to reach out to them? We didn't know what to do. And we got some, some counsel and they were like, you could file for bankruptcy, but it may not be worth it because the amount isn't like more than 10,000 and some other things. And then if, you know, if we were behind on anything else, like our house or our car, then we were going to, you know, it's a possibility we could lose that stuff too. So it, it kind of became like a mess. Well, as all of that was going on and we had gotten sued literally less than a month later, a few weeks later, we got sued again. So we got sued this time by Capital One. And again, Nothing against Capital One or Citibank or anything. I'm not bashing any of them, okay? These are just hard facts. So I got sued by Capital One just weeks later. And this one was for like $1,500. So we're now paying like $7,000 in credit card debt in lawsuits. So we were letting in, and there were two different like companies that were suing us and all these other things. and. It's just a mess. And so, you know, again, if we weren't freaking out the first time, you know, the second time, the second time actually for me, my wife was kind of, uh, she was worried about it. And it's it's funny because it's, it, it's like sometimes you're worried about stuff and sometimes you're not. When we got handed papers the second time, I just kind of laughed. I was, I was in disbelief and I was like, you know, we're going to be experts of this stuff by the time we're done with this. And so, it came to the point where we had to decide what we wanted to do. Now that we got sued twice, not just once, but twice, um, you know, what do we do at that point? Do we still try to go for bankruptcy or do we have to, you know, what do we do? Because time was closing on, uh, time was running out, time was running out on what to, what we needed to do because we had to either appear in court or start paying it. 
uh, by a certain date. So anyway, and if we file for an extension, then we have to do all this other stuff to file the extension. So, you know, it's not easy, but I get it because, you know, we didn't pay that money back. So I'm going to, I'm going to come back to the lesson part of it in just a second. So let me finish up the story. So we prayed about it and we got some financial counsel from people we knew that uh, dealt with finances and we called into like a hotline that you can call and get some advice and stuff like that through the state and eventually we came to the conclusion that we were going to do the right thing and pay them and so we called them both we called each one I called the one that I owed and my wife called the one that she owed and we made an we made an agreement with each one of them so we actually reached out to those companies, said, okay, we want to pay this. Let's set up a payment plan, drop the lawsuit, and we'll pay the payment plan. You know, it all got worked through papers. Obviously, we were stipulated to pay them uh, the amounts and everything, but we did get those set up on payment plans that were reasonable. Um, it's like 100 bucks a month for the first one and 50 bucks for the second one. And yes, I am still paying that. Um, but... And it, and it seems very personal for me to tell you all this, but at the same time, like, I want you to understand that this stuff has consequences, okay? So, yes, I am still paying off these debts currently. And that's pretty much the end of the story. So, like, it came down to, do we try to file bankruptcy and, and do, like, the quick, easy fix, or do we go to our creditors and do we work out what we owe and, and pay that off? And the lesson that I got out of all this is that, you know, your our con like our actions create consequences, okay? And we can't escape those consequences. Sure, there are ways that we can kind of shortcut the the consequences, I suppose. But really, when we when my wife and I kind of owned up to those things, um, and we called those those companies, we prayed about it before we each, we called them. And we were very humble about it. Like we weren't going to go in expecting this and this other thing. We just humbly called them up and said, look, okay, if you drop the lawsuit, we're willing to pay. And that was it. And it wasn't the people that we talked to were super nice. And the process really was not that hard to get that set up to pay them. And I mean, it really was not that big a deal. The lawsuit seemed scary, but to actually call the companies and work something out to, you know, pay them back the money that we owed them was not that big a deal. So here's kind of the lesson that I've learned out of this. Um, first is that if you can avoid overspending, do it. I would advise not anyone to get a credit card unless you are super, super responsible and everybody thinks they're responsible, but I would, I, there's a lot of people I think, I know that they think they're responsible and I've seen their habits and they're not. I would advise no one to get a credit card. However, I understand that we live in a world where there's a lot of need for credit and stuff like that. Um, if you read any of Dave Ramsey's books, Dave Ramsey is a financial, you know, he's not really a financial advisor, but he gives financial advice. So ironically, uh, but if you read any of his books, he talks about like, you really don't need credit because if you have, if you save up enough money, you can really get anything you want, just like a house. Like even if you don't have good credit, if you save up thousands of dollars for a house, you can get a house because they'll want to give you the house because you show them that you're good with money by showing them the down payment or that you at least can get the money if you need it. So really, or you could save up money and buy a car outright, things like that. You really don't need a credit. That's his thing. So I can't tell you whether or not you should get a credit card or you should get any type of credit. My point is, is that you should not overspend. So the lesson that I learned the hard way, not the first time that it happened to me, the second, well, actually probably like the third or fourth, because there are other things that I didn't pay back that besides those credit cards that went on my credit and I just didn't learn my lesson. It wasn't until I got sued for it that I really learned that when you don't pay this money back, you're basically breaking a promise. When you take a credit card or a line of credit or when you, you know, basically take money on some kind of loan, you're telling that that person or that institution that you're going to pay it back. And yes, there are predatory loans and lines of credit and stuff like this. A lot of college debt is predatory. But at the same time, you're not forced to take it. You make the choice to take on that debt. 
And if you ever read the Bible, the Bible says that the borrower is slave to the lender. And it's so true because anytime you owe any debt at all, I owe on my house, I am a slave to the lender. You know, they own the house, not me, until I pay that off. And bankruptcy, you know, and the whole idea of the debt being on the credit report for seven, seven years, that's to really, it's not just to hurt people. It's really to discourage them to not make the same mistake. You see, bankruptcy used to hurt people a lot more in the past, but in the last few years, they've made it so that bankruptcy really isn't that big a deal. Now you can declare bankruptcy and then go get, you know, more credit within a relatively short period of time. And it didn't used to be that way, but to protect consumers, it's now easier to get credit even after you've declared bankruptcy, which I don't agree is necessarily a good thing because if you're not really learning your lesson from, you know, from overspending, then you're probably just going to go right back to it. So my ultimate bottom line point out of all this is if you can avoid overspending, please do. Because you don't want to end up like me having to get sued to pay your debts back. I'm not mad at the companies that sued me. I'm not mad at any of the creditors I've ever owed money to because they're in the right, not me. And the fact that I was just like everybody else where I was avoiding the calls or I was mad that they were harassing me and calling me and sending me emails and stuff like that. Well, yeah, I mean, if you took a thousand dollars from someone and didn't pay them back, they'd have a right to be mad. I mean, you promised to pay that back. So I'm not condemning anyone. I've been in that situation. And once I got sued these two times, I vowed that I, this will not happen again. I will not take any more credit cards and I won't take any more lines of credit because I know that I didn't learn my lesson the first time and I don't want to be in this position again. So that's pretty much it. I, I know this is a little bit long and I apologize, but I really wanted to share that life lesson. Like if you can avoid, don't look, if there's something you want, okay, save up money for it or, you know, put that aside don't get a credit card to start buying things or overextending yourself financially because if you lose your job or if you lose you know any source of income or you take a pay cut or something like that how are you going to pay that back you know it's very easy to get trapped into that and because you know debt is such a big problem especially here in America but i think in a lot of first world countries it's it's only going to get worse so don't overspend. Don't overexert yourself financially. Look, live below your means and save up before you buy something because you don't want to be like me. You don't want to get sued and then have to file for bankruptcy or you know, have to create a, a payment plan for that company. Just don't do it in the first place. Look, ultimately, the borrower is slave to the lender and I just want to help you guys hopefully avoid that. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now, I get it. The last thing I'll say is I get if there are certain things you have to put on credit, like a house or a car. If you can avoid that, then please avoid it. But I, I understand. I mean, I have a house and a car on credit because I had a car, but it broke down and I didn't have money saved up for a new one because all that money went to other things like paying off debts. So I get it. But if you can avoid it, I'm going to urge that to you because it wasn't necessarily instilled in me. So I just want to instill that in you. Okay, it's very easy to get wrapped up in that stuff. But that's it for the video. I really hope that it, it makes sense and that it hopefully affects somebody out there to rethink their spending habits and overspending because it's an easy trap to get into. Anyway, I will catch you guys in another video. Take care, guys.